right, so with that, um, let's continue onwards to the next new feature, uh, which was Legends. So I mentioned before that Legends, sort of like Legends on a map where you have a quick and easy visual reference on your drawing for exactly what the different markup types are and what exactly those symbols mean so that you're not having to dig through the markups list to figure out uh, what those various symbols mean. Um, so I'll show you an example of how this works. So let's close out this report we're looking at and uh, I'm going to open up um, this drawing right here. So you can see here that uh, I've done some flooring takeoffs on this drawing. If I look at my markups list, um, I've defined different material types uh, for these different area measurements um, and also defined a material cost uh, so that it's, it's calculating my, my cost for me, which is really cool. But as it stands right here, this is not so user-friendly because if I just eyeball this main drawing, I don't know the difference between what does blue mean, what is green, uh, what is red. I don't know what any of this stuff is, so I'm constantly having to look down here in the markups list to figure it out. So this is why we created Legends. So let's go ahead and take a look at how uh, legends would work. So uh, I'm going to select some different area measurements here. So let's select uh, these five or so. And I'm going to right click on this and let's create a legend out of it, shall we? So this right here is the legend I just created. And I can scale this out a little larger so it's easier to read. And this gives me a quick and easy cheat sheet on what exactly these markups actually mean, uh, as well as I've got some columns there for uh, what it is, the quantity, and the unit there. Um, but as with everything else in review, this is not one size fits all. I can customize this to my specific needs. So if I don't want this to just say legend, maybe I want to say flooring types. I can update that right there. And uh, maybe I'd like to add another column. So I want it to show that uh, material uh, column as well. Let's toggle that on. And there we go. Now I've got that uh, material column right there as well. And one of the really cool things about Legends is that it dynamically updates as you're placing additional markups. So uh, let's take this, uh, this carpet uh, area measurement right here. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it and keep an eye on this number right here, the second number. It says 6,832. Watch what happens when I paste another one of these area uh, measurements. So it went up because I just added an, another markup on there. So it's dynamically updating uh, this number of square feet as I go. And same goes if I delete this one, watch this number, it'll go back down. And if I delete this one right here, it'll go down even further. So really, really handy tool, uh, especially when you're doing takeoffs and punch, particularly uh, to have a quick and easy reference of what exactly uh, these different markups mean. So I just sh showed a takeoff example. Uh, what about punch? I've mentioned that several times. Let's take a look at how that would work. So actually to illustrate that, let's, let's start with just a fresh, totally blank PDF. So there's nothing on this PDF. And uh, because I'm about to do punch, let's swap over to that punch profile because that's where I have all these handy uh, punch keys saved, ready to go. So looking at these punch keys, um, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what do they mean. I can hover over them and see the tool tips uh, to see what they mean, but still not the most user friendly. And I can swap it over to detail view, which makes it a little bit better because now I see those comments saying uh, what it is. But again, on the main drawing, still not the most user friendly. So let's use legends to our advantage here. And to illustrate this, I'm going to use these cleaning punch keys as an example. So you can actually generate legends from tool sets. And uh, I'm going to do that from this punch, cle punch key cleaning tool set. So let's generate that new legend and drop it on the drawing. And you can see it's just blank right now because I don't have any markups yet. So let's play some markups. I'm going to drop my various punch keys on there. And you'll notice that that legend is dynamically updating 
as I'm placing those markups on there. So it's updating those quantities and it's also letting me know uh, these various uh, punch keys. So again, I can change the properties of uh, this legend. So um, I will call this my test uh, punch legend. And let's edit the columns. Uh, let's add in subject and let's do status as well. Um, and actually let's do comments instead of subject. There we go. Um, and let's change the visual properties. I would like it to actually be a grid format and let's do black lines instead of red. So there we go. I have customized this uh, this legend to my specific needs. And I've got this little status column. Let's, uh, let's start populating that. So if I go down in the markups list uh, and look at these various punch keys that I've dropped on there, uh, I have a status column. Let's go ahead and assign some statuses. So I can say this has been accepted, this has been rejected, and notice how it's dynamically updating up here in that legend. So you can continue going through and defining uh, those statuses as I see fit. So very, very cool stuff. Um, a huge fan of, of Legends. I think that um, of all the different features in this version, it's, it's uh, to me like one of the, the, the coolest ones, the most visually impressive uh, to see. So uh, hopefully you guys like it and find a lot of uh, utility out of it. So next, I'm going to jump into uh, those Revit enhancements. So I mentioned before uh, we have some enhancements to our Revit plugin, just a refresher, uh, more accurate transfer of section boxes and linked model info, uh, better representation of material colors, and this is the big one, uh, Revit rooms will now transfer over to PDFs via spaces. So before I show you how the new plugin works with that functionality, Again, let's look back at how we would traditionally have to set up spaces. So uh, before, whenever you created those, uh, those Revit rooms, they were essentially just lost whenever you transferred over to PDF, which was really a bummer. Um, and what you would have to do is manually set up those spaces. So I'll show you how to do that very quickly here. Essentially, you would have to one by one, click and drag and set up all these spaces. So I would have to define that this is room number uh, or office number 127. Here's uh, my electrical room right here, 125, and so on and so forth. Really just a monotonous, time-consuming task and, and really redundant because you already did this in Revit. Um, so why do we even care about these spaces coming over? Well. There's a lot of really useful applications for this. So I'll show you a good example of that. Again, returning to uh, the punch example here. So you can see on this drawing that uh, I've dropped various punch keys on there and I've also defined various spaces. What's great about that is when you look in the markups list here, I can quickly and easily reference exactly what spaces uh, these punch keys have been dropped into and I can sort it as well as filter it and it's all going to show up on my reporting. So really, really handy to have, but I don't want to waste a lot of time recreating all these spaces. So this is why we added uh, Revit rooms to spaces. So I don't actually have Revit uh, on this laptop that I'm working on, so I'm just going to uh, open up a video uh, that we created earlier, and I'm just going to talk through uh, what exactly is happening on the page. So. Um, you can see here on the in the video, we're currently in Revit, um, going to the settings here, um, and you can see in the settings for the, the Bluebeam plugin that by default, export rooms to spaces is already going to be checked. You also have an option for exporting rooms to area measurements if you wanted to uh, get measurements uh, from those rooms as well. Uh, that's an option. But in this case, for this demo, we're just going to do rooms to spaces. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and do create PDF there and, and run that. 
And jumping over to review here, you can see that all those rooms were carried over as spaces right on the drawing. So they're all set up, ready to rock. Uh, this person just saved a huge amount of time uh, not having to recreate the wheel and set up all these spaces all over again. So really huge time saver for any of those Revit customers we have out there in the world.